her life. Now, in, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 28, this is the word of God. It said, if you fully obey, that's the source of the blessing. The blessing of God is wrapped in a certain things, which is obedience, which is understanding. Remember, this is the program where we say, discover your purpose. You need to understand the purpose, then you will understand the blessing. The blessing is already there, and it's already exists, and it's already within you. But you need to understand where is the it, and where is the source of my blessing. Now, Deuteronomy 28, I will say that if you fully obey the Lord your God, and carefully keep all his command that I'm giving to you today, the Lord your God will set you higher above all the nations of the world. You will experience all this blessing if you obey the Lord your God. Repeat again. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his command that I'm giving you today. Today I'm going to give some command or some Keep to, uh, the key things which you need to understand in order for you to succeed in your life that I'm giving you today. Then the Lord your God will set you higher above all the nation in the world. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, you will experience all the blessing if you obey the Lord your God. Now, the blessing of God is hindering in him in obeying the command and the, having the instruction of the blessing. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 1. In Genesis chapter number 1, the Bible says, and God say, let us make man in our own image. I'm going to read verse 1, verse 26 uh, to 29. That's the foundation of the blessing of a son of God. As a son of God, you need to understand this. Wow. Then the Lord God said, verse 26, Let us make man, humans be in our image. To be like us, they will reign over all the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scroll along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, men and female. Verse 28, then God blesses them and he said, you see, then God blesses them and he said, mm -hmm. verse 28, he blesses them and he said, be one, fruitful, two, multiply, fill the earth, uh, govern it, reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, all the animal that Yeshua along the ground. Then God said, look. I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit hmm, and all the fruit tree from your food and I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animal the bird in the sky and the small animal that shall show along the ground everything that has life and that is what happened. Then God, then God looked over all the he had made, and he saw that it was good. And evening passed, and morning came, making the six days. Yeah, this one. I don't know if you're following me for a way. Let's repeat again. You remember, we are on Sunday. We talked about uh, that giving, being diligent. To see the state of your frock. We talked about it on Sunday in Proverbs chapter number 28, 27, verse number 24. Let's talk about that. Being diligent to know the state of your business, the state of your farm, the state of your house. We talked about that. Now, the instruction came, and this was the instruction. One, God blesses them, and He said, Be fruitful. It's your responsibility to understand and to discover why I am not fruitful, why I am not succeeding in my life, why are things not moving on. 
Meaning, if you see that things is not going on in a smooth way as you supposed to, you think it was supposed to go. Meaning, there is something wrong. And one of the area which may be wrong is your fail to listen and to pay attention, to be diligent, to hear, to understand the state of that business, the state of that things you are doing. Remember, in verse twenty-eight, the God said, "And then God blesses them." And he said, be fruitful, multiply. You need to multiply. Because the state of the business cannot increase, cannot go to another level. If you don't multiply, multiplication is the only system, is the only way man can see, can be able to see his, that he's succeeding in what he's doing. Now, verse 29, and God said, then God said, look, then God said, look, I have given you every seed, every seed, which can make you to be prosper. Because every seed which bear fruit, I have given you. Now, the question is, what seed do you have? Have you identified the seed which God has given you? The Bible says, Behold, I have given you every seed which bear fruit, which can make you prosper, which can make you succeed. I want to speak about prosperity. I want to motivate you to see how can you prosper in your life. The blessing of God is already there. You are blessed, my brother, my sister. You are one of the chosen ones whom God has blessed. But you need to understand, where is the source of my blessing? Where is my blessing? Remember your blessing is in your hand. Your blessing is in your hand. Already you have it. That's what the Bible says. Verse 29, Behold, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth, which can make you prosper every seed. When I speak about the seed, I'm speaking about the kind of the work you are doing. Or even though you have nothing you are doing, it already exists in this world. The program you have failed to discover, the, your purpose, you have failed to discover what can I do in such a time like this. What can I do? Some of you, the business are there, the work are there, but you despise. You say that is not me. Now it's not, but it's not about talking. So now experience the the, the talent and everything you have, but it's about not to sit down and you listen. That what is my potential? Because according to me, who I am, who is me? If you fail to understand who you are, then you are going to miss the blessing. The blessing of God is already there. It's overflowing. It's overflowing. Just understand, where is my blessing? Where is my blessing? If you fail to understand where your blessing is, then you are not going to prosper in your life. There is none of us which God desire to be poor. None. That's why in, Pro in, in Proverbs, it says that you should work. You should work. Now let's turn back to, to, to this verse. They say that I have given you every kind of the seed. Now do you have that seed? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Do you have that seed? I spoke about last time about seven mountains of influence. Maybe some of you have that mountain already there. You are there. You are misusing that. That's why the proverb said, be diligent to understand the state of your flock. Understand the state of your flock and how, how, pay attention to see your work. Pay attention, listen and see how is the state of my work today. What are the state of my business? If you can understand the state of your work, the state of your business, the state of your house, the state of your household, the state of your farm, you are going to prosper. Prosperity is already existing in our life. But you need to understand how can I prosper? And where is my blessing? Most of the time people doesn't honor their business. And most of the people they don't pay attention to their business. 
or to their work. And let me tell you something, if you're having only one kind of job you are doing in your life, you will never succeed in your life. That's why even in this generation, God never give man one kind of things. He said, I've given you variety of seed, all the kind, all the kind of the seed. Look, I have given you every seed, every seed. It can be a seed of farm beans, can be a seed of potatoes, can sweet potatoes, every kind of the seed. What does this mean? It can be every kind of the work. Don't always focus on one thing and say it's done. Don't always be, be measured by only focus on one. Do the, the, that's what it said. So in the morning, so in the evening. You don't know which one will prosper. Great men, they have no one kind of thing. Go with this, refuse. Go to another one. And everybody, it's not about doing this and this, but it's also about to focus and to see which one exactly is me. Where do, is God want me to go? Who I mean? According to the original purpose. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to the to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28, it says that if you fully obey the Lord your God, so the instruction, this is the instruction which you need to pay attention to, that if you fully obey the voice of the Lord your God and carefully keep all his command that I'm giving you today, the instruction of business, the instruction of, of company, the instruction of, of, of every company has rule and regulation, or time and the condition. When you are applying for the job, the first thing they will give you, you will need you need to study the term and the condition, rule and regulation of the company, of the business, of the ministry. That's how you can succeed. That's how you can prosper. Even when you are starting the business, for instance, I want to start a farm. I want to become a one of the great people who cultivate this and this. First study the environment of the crop you are going to put, to put into the ground. Because the season matters. If you don't study, then you can plant the seeds a seed which cannot match with the season. No, in every season there is a seed which can succeed. Now, if you don't listen to the system, you are not going to prosper. And according to the blessing, there is a term and the condition of God to, in order God to bless us. Even in our business, even in our company, even when you are applying for the job, there is a term and the condition. Even when you are applying for everything, there is a role and regulation. You need to read them. You need to study. Before you sign, you need to read them. You go through and you understand in order for you not to make an error. Many people you just run and start things without thinking, without monitoring and evaluating, without understanding that according to what I'm going to do, how will it come to pass? How will I succeed in this? How will this support me? Discover. It's good to learn from the, from the work, but it's good also to know what you're going to do. Praise the Lord. So, this is, that, this is what, I, what I'm trying to tell you. That's the source of the blessing. Many people you are crying, Father, I need the blessing. I'm not blessed. I don't know how I will gain this. I don't know how I will do this. Thank you so much. Now, sit down and listen. The steps of your business, the steps of your company. What are the company talking about? What product I am producing? How is it? Where is the market? Hmm? You can be a good farmer and you cultivate, but is it what you, are, what, what you have been planting? Is it what you are cultivating? Does it have a market? What are you selling in the, in, in the world? Are you going in the market where they sell to what you are selling? For instance, you cannot go to the market where they sell food and we put clothes in, in, in there. They will not buy. Position yourself in the area where you see this thing, what I'm doing, what I'm taking, is marketable in that particular moment. There is an area where in the, in some, in, in the first world countries, you, there is a street where you know in this street they sell shoes. In the street they sell clothes. In the other street they sell the, the vendor's market. 
You need to understand the state so that when you are, when you are positioned yourself, you position, you package yourself very well. Some of you don't know how to package yourself. You don't know what you're supposed to do. You don't know where you're supposed to start. You don't know what you're supposed to do. You are just trying, grumbling here and there. And at the end of the day, you say, Father, I'm, I request you for the blessing. I'm not blessed. What I'm selling is not going on. Yes, because you have not packaged yourself well. Now, the Bible says, if you fully obey the Lord your God, let's turn it to ourselves again. One, if you obey the Lord your God, if you obey your business, if you obey the role and the regulation of your company, if you obey the role and the regulation of your business, if you obey the role and the regulation of your farm. Two, and carefully keep all the each command that I'm giving you today. Understand it, what the business requires, what God requires from you, what uh, that things require from you. Stand it. What does your farm require from you? Hmm? There is a saying we say, if you don't feed the cow very well, don't think, don't think that you will milk it, you will get a milk from it. First feed. Require what does the farm require from you? You have a livestock, what does it require? You have an animal, the poultry, what does it require from you? Before you require egg from it, what does it require from you? First feed before you receive. First give out before you see how you can gain out of it. Think about that. You know, some of you, you just wake up and you say, I start the business today, you want to eat immediately, then and then. When you're starting a business, don't aim to earn. Just aim to give. Put inside it. Put more. Don't just think of getting a cup. You, you put a cup of 10,000 today and tomorrow you, you have given a profit of 5,000. You want to eat the 5,000. That's the problem to most of you today. Don't think of eating of the business. First think of putting in the business and take it as grown in the level where it can, it can maintain itself. Then it can pay you. Otherwise, you are not going to gain out of it. Remember, you have a cut of 10 million, you have started a business of 10 million, you have four workers in that business, each of them you're paying them 200,000 per month, that's 800,000 per month, you're paying a rent of 1 million, that's 1.8 million per month, and, and also you're having, a, you need to feed your people, then you're feeding them with 200,000 per month, that's 2M, then you have an extension of 200,000 per month, that's 2.2. And how many, how much do you make in a month? You make a capital, you are making a, a profit of 3,000, 3 million per month. Meaning, out of that, you're having, you, are, you have 2.2, this is an expert. Then you're having 800, which is a profit out of the business. And even if you are paying yourself that money. No, get the money, return it back to the business, let it add the capital, and instead add more things in the capital. That today I have sold, I've been selling uh, this and this, and people have been asked another thing which I don't have. So next month or next week, bring what they have been requiring. There's something which has not been demandable. That those which are not demandable, leave it out, let them be in the stock, but add more which is demandable. I want you to make a research to know the state of the business, the state of your customer. What does the customer require for me? What does the people require for me? What does my animal require for me? What does my farm require for me? If you can listen to the state of the people, what they require, you can succeed in your life. The reason why you are crying, because you don't listen. It's a matter of putting that, oh, my shop has grown. It's not about the shop to grow. It's about to understand what does the people require in the community. I'm a businessman, and what I talk about, I know about it. But then you are lucky to hear this message today. So amazing, it's so amazing. You know, understand the state of the business. It's from God, everyone, God wanted to prosper. God wanted to succeed. You know, in the area, for instance, you're in the small area, everyone is selling the, you are selling the similarity of the things in there together. Look for what is not there and bring what is not there. How does you can see the blessing? Hmm? All of you in the same area, you are selling gin trouser. You see, you are selling the same item. You are about 10 show. Look for what is not there.
and bring what is not there you will have a lot of things you have no uh, you have you have your own customers praise the lord there's no which there cannot be no competition with others because what you are selling none of them have it but now the greatest program to the people today is love. When I bring the Bible, I'm selling the Bible, everyone will bring the Bible. When I turn to the phone, everyone will turn to the phone. When I bring the, the portion, everyone will come. Why? Why are you bringing what people? Just make a research in the community. See what people doesn't have. What is marketable in the place? And you bring that, and you're going to succeed in your life. And I told you, listen to the voice and listen to the people in the community. What are the demand about? Always, if you want to succeed, always allow people to counsel you. Allow people to speak about your weakness. Allow people to speak about the demand. Don't just say, oh, this is no. Let them speak about you. Let them talk. And you see what they want out of you. Then you give them what they want. Remember, your customer are your boss. Some of you, you are so you are too, you are too you are too bo you are boss. When you sit in your chair and you rotate as I'm rotating here and you feel like oh I'm I'm, I'm Almighty no, because those people that you are your you boss. You, some of you you are so pride. You sit in your chair, you rotate, you feel like oh I'm boss now. Eh? That office where you are sitting. You need to listen to them. Some of you are MOP. The local people in the village which voted you, those are your boss. Those are your boss, the constituents, people in the constituents. Some of them have sent you this week, I remember in Uganda, the parliament have sent all the MOP to go to their community to find out about how things are moving. Go and visit them. Go and listen to them. Because the people in the ground Ministers, the local people in the village, they're the one who know the state of the community, the constituent, how it is. Not the people in the office. Eh? You, the governor. Those local people in the community, they know the states of the nation. You cannot measure it in the parliament or in the offices. It's good. I know you plan, you think bigger than we. But we who are in the ground, we can give the clear picture. Of what exactly is taking place. Pastors, the, the people in the your church members, those are your boss. And they're the one giving you the job. Those sinners. <laughs> the more they sin, the more you come before the Lord. And that's why the reason why God is paying you. Because you are standing before the Lord on their behalf. So don't be just pride in your office, your pride so that the customer has come. They ask you, uh, do you have sugar? How much is a kilo of sugar? You go and shake there. Don't you see? Don't be so arrogant. There is a, even there is a figure which they put in the public office. When you're working in the, in the supermarket, you're working in the shop, you are shop attenders, you are in the market vendor, just know you are, you are in a public service. You do a public service to the community. So, those people who are coming, that person bring 100 to buy a sweet. Is she, he or she is your boss. Even though it's a young baby, but he has come with money. I want to see how you can respect your customers. Have a sense of respecting everyone who bless you. Even they come with a coin, with one shilling, he's already your boss. Pay attention to him. Don't be so proud in your office. Don't be so proud in, in, in your share. Because you have a big share. Because you have a big car. Think about that. That's what the God said. That if you fully obey the Lord your God. And carefully. The word carefully. Is a very being sensitive. Hmm? Carefully. And keep all his command. I want to be watchmen. To see how your people move, how things move, how things will go on. Pay attention. Don't just be there. Don't just be proud of yourself. Just don't be proud of what you're doing. Don't just be proud. No. 
Don't just think that you're beyond. You are not beyond. The people has make you to become great. Those that make you great, think about them very well. If you're boss, those workers, that secretary on the on the gate, that that actually the guard on the gate, play a role, play, play a very great role in your office. He did not he determine who's supposed to enter and who's not supposed to enter. If you misbehave with them, he will refuse your boss to come in. He will resist with some good things to enter into your office. I want you to respect every office. In, the, in, in gaining the blessing or in success, we respect every office because every office adds something to us. That's the one of the principles of success. Success is full of respect and honor. You honor everyone like more than you honor yourself. That's why Jesus said that if you want to follow me, deny yourself and carry your own cross and follow me. You need to deny your, your, yourself. Don't be so, in all business people, you don't be so pride. You need to deny yourself to respect your, your clients. Someone has come, welcome him. You know, you say, you're most welcome now, man. How can I help you? What do you want? You know, I want to go, oh, let me carry for you. Now, this girl or this woman will say, wow, they've given me so good care. Tomorrow, he will bring his friend. Tomorrow, she will bring her friend. Because you have to take a good resp responsibility. You have to your good responsibility in your office. Now, verse number two. If you do that, the last part of it, then the Lord your God will set you higher above all the nation. Your business will go higher above all the business in the community. Your work will grow higher above all the workers. You will become more of the popular. They will promote you. They will exalt you. Why? Because you love your job. Some of you don't love your job. Some of you don't love your, the money itself. Some of you don't love the business itself. Some of you don't love everything. That's why you're misusing it. You are fighting higher and higher to see that it, it cannot prosper. Discipline. The blessing of God is already exist, but you need to be disciplined. Understand how you're supposed to do it. Now, if you obey all what I'm talking about, if you do everything, then the blessing of God shall come upon you. Verse number two. Then you will experience all the blessing if you obey the Lord your God. If you can obey the Lord, if God can obey your business, you can obey your work, you can obey everything, you can follow all the protocol and all the procedure, and you respect your job, you respect the clients, you respect the, business, the customers, you respect everybody then you are going to endure, you are going to experience the blessing. The blessing is already there. No one is wishing you. And some of you say, this man is a wish. That's why every customer is going to there. But how did he treat his customers? And think how you treat your customer. You see, you sit there, you, eat, you are eating, and customers come, he, he is asking you something, you are just there sitting. You don't care. And you go to your neighbor and you buy exactly what you have. And you say, you know, my that customer is, is, is a wish. She's not a wish. He's not a wish. You are saying, your mind has bewitched you. You are so proud. I want you to see how you can manage your work. How you can manage your business. Now listen. Then you, you, you express all the blessings. Then you are, you are town and you are filled will be blessed. Or you will be blessed in the town and in the field or in the village. Why? The blessing of God is not in the town or in the village. The blessing of God is everywhere. Whether in the village or in the city, you are blessed. But the instruction is you need to follow the protocol and the procedure. How can I be blessed? Number one, know the seed you have. You need to understand what kind of the seed I have, which God has given me. That seed determines the blessing. That seed, it might be the work of cleaner. That seed, it might be you a driver. That seed, it might be you a politician. That seed, it might be you a doctor. 
That seed, it might be you a teacher. That seed, it might be you an engineer. Now, I want you to listen to the seed, to study the environment where you are going to plant that seed. The environment of, of the plantation of the seed, that is the environment where you are working. We are going to start, start the business. The office you have applied for the job. But when you plant the seed, you need to weed it, you need to water it, you need to pay attention to it, you need to value it. Most of the people don't value the office. You love your job before you apply, before they give you the job. When you start the already working, you don't value it more. You see, it's like nothing. Even the man that gives me the But the, before you apply, before he was looking for the job, you were saying, every any amount I can work for. After you have received the job, now you are saying the money is not enough. Now they give me little money, they don't pay me too much. You used to walk the office at 8. Yeah? What time is this now? You go to the office at 10. You have no, you lose the first love. Let me read you the uh, Revelation, chapter number 2. Even God is again in some of you. Revelation. It says, let me read it all together. Write this letter to the angel of the church in the episode. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and the one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patience and your arrears. I know you do towards evil people. You don't, uh, you don't associate with them. You are examining the claim of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered they are a liar. You have, you have been just suffering for me without quitting. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did as the first. Eh? You don't love, you leave the first love. Where is the first love of your business? Remember when you opened that show. You used to work very early in the morning. You close very late. You don't want even to eat even amount of it. You need to balance your work. You need to pay attention to the business. Where is that first love? Eh? Where is that first love? Remember when you was campaigning, the love you have. You used to kneel down when you are asking for the vote. Where is that love? Can you kneel down today again and go, thank you so much for voting me, my, my people. You need to, to bribe even to have that office. But where is the or where are you today? You say now today you are saying they give me the money they give me is not enough. But remember at the first. Remember the passion you have at the first. Remember the love you have at the first. Remember the commitment you have at the first. The reason why you see you are not blessed today. The reason why you see you are suffering today, because. The first love, you left it off. Now today you are crying. I'm not blessed. Pastor pray for me. Prophet pray for me. Uh, you go to the witch doctor. You come to the pastor. You come to the priest. You come to the father. You come to everyone. You go to the Catholics. You go to the Protestant. You go to the most. You go to the Pentecostal. You go to the, to the Sinai. You are looking for the blessing. The blessing is with you. The reason why you are doing all this you lose the first love of God. The first love of your business. Remember when he was applying for the job. You used to walk. You say even at 8, even at 6 I will come. But see today. After 2 months, after 3 months, you are used to the work. You don't value it. Even the money they give you, you see, is small. You don't value it. You see, that's the, the challenge you're going through. Remember how you used to cry that you want a capital. And you remember how you started. How you used to pay attention to your business. You didn't want even to eat even a coin. 
You didn't want even to miss everything. Even when they say, let us, let us eat, so, no, that's the business. You come with your food in your own business. You prepare it from home. At least you cook. But today now you see everything is like, uh -uh. you see, let me give you an example. If, if your business is not going to prosper, you will see this. You come in the morning, you don't prepare for the tea. You buy a tea in the what? You, you just buy a tea from the restaurant. Some of you don't take from the restaurant. In the immediate you reach to the shop, you get a yogurt. Or you get a soda. You get, a, with, with, you get something in the shop. In the, your morning breakfast, you eat, the, you, you eat 10,000 from your shop. And that's already capital. When you are eating in the business, you are eating the capital. You do two things at a go. You eat the capital, you eat the, the profit. Can I repeat again? When you enter into your show, you pick anything from the show and you eat, you ate it because of breakfast, because of hungry. You have already ate what? The capital and the profit. Think about it. Okay? So, I want you to sit down. You make uh, accountability in the evening. How much was your expenditure in the day, in that business? If you, if, if, if you expend, your expenditure rent to 10,000 in a day at the show, and uh, you, you calculated what amount have you sell on a day, and how much was the profit? If you discover that you work in a day, for instance, you have worked for 100,000, and after 100,000, the profit was at 8,000. And the expenditure of a day was at 10,000. You're in your failure already. Never expect to succeed in your life. And you will never go to another level. Your expenditure should not go beyond the, the profit you are having in a day. Why? Because that's how you can succeed. You, you cannot determine your blessing on the capital you have. You determine the blessing on the, on the profit you earn per day. How you can see that you are, you are prospering? Your prosperity does not determine on the capital you have in the show. Your prosperity determines on the profit you are earning every day. If every day you don't have any profit in your life, never expect think that you are going to another level. So, you need to balance that. Some of you, your expenditure is higher than your income generated. I'd say to you the blessing you can do, not determine it on how much capital you have, the blessing determined on the profit you make on per day. How you, the, the capital is just already is there, but the increase of the capital is the profit you are earning, you are earning during the day the best. So your expense should not go beyond the capital. It's a bit, it's a bit less than. Think about it. Don't so be surprised because today we have made 10 million. Even though you have owned 10 million in the business in a day, first sit down and calculate how much was the capital. When you detect the capital out of it, then you will see how much is remaining with you. That is the, the, the profit. Then the expenditure should determine the profit you are earning per day. Some of you are selling some of the things you, you, like for instance, you sell a bread at 5,000 and you bought it at 4,500. So, on the bread you have a profit of 500 on it, but you are eating it. You, in the, you reach in the shop in the media to get a bread and some of them you throw it out and you say that you are going to prosper. Please, think about it. So, the blessing of God, you need to be disciplined. One of the steps of success is discipline. If, I'm, if you are in discipline, you will never succeed in your life. The reason why you are suffering, you are in discipline. And one of the ways you need to discipline yourself is to govern, to govern your, your stomach. You need to know this, all of this. That's why the Bible says that you have lost the first love. Remember the first time you stayed, you entered that show. Your expenses were very, very, very low. But today, everything has done. Everything has gone beyond you. Think about it. So, let's go back to the tournament. 
it says that you shall be blessed in the morning, in the city, and also in the village. The blessing of God is not only in the village, but it's everywhere. Wherever you are, as long as you know the principle of the blessing, you are going to be blessed. By the way, you are blessed. That's why he said, you, your town and your field will be blessed. Your children and your crop will be blessed. Your offering of your hand, of your work and the flock will be blessed. Your fruit basket and the bread will be blessed. Wherever you go in, out, and wherever you go in, you will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do shall be blessed. Everything you do shall be blessed. Why? You have understand the principle of the business. Success is not something you get. Success is something you make. Make yourself, your life to be better. Listen to the steps of your business. Listen to the steps of your house. Well, let me read Proverbs 27. And the proverb I told you about, let me read it again for you. 27, that proverb is a very sensitive uh, verse for each and everybody which you need to understand today and you need to pay attention to it. Verse 24, know the steps of your flock, Proverb 27, 23, know the steps of your flock and put your heart into caring of your work. You put, uh, put your heart Concerning your work, concerning your business, concerning your flock, concerning the ministry, put your heart, not the steps of it. Sit down and listen, sit down and discover, sit down and think and know how can this thing go to another level. No one will make it for you, it's you to sit down and listen. That's why I'm here listening to you all. When I teach this message, I always sit down and I listen to myself. Where, where have you done some error? What was not good? I listen to myself. And one of my listeners, I pay attention to myself, to listen to myself, to listen to myself. Even though I'm praying, sometimes record my prayer and listen to it. And then I judge myself, it, if I was God, would I answer this prayer? Sometimes I judge myself, I sit in the judgment in the, on the throne of God, I say, wow, now if I was I save and I came before the Lord and this, I was God, will I answer this? If I say no, then I say, okay, I need to change. I want you to sit down, go to your business, sit there in the shop. This days even me, I go to my shop and I sit down and listen to the song. I see the state of my show. I can know that I'm not increasing. I'm not prospering. Prosperity is not about speaking spoken word. It's about to listen. I want you to study, to know the steps of that work. It's not about people are coming, now we are in the lockdown. The, the, all the pastors, all the leaders, the, the spiritual leaders, they are crying. Now sit down and listen to the steps of the member. You have not listened to your people, that's why they're not, you are not seeing them today. This is a very sensitive topic. You need to understand it very well. I don't want to miss you even, even to miss even a single hour. Hmm? Go to your show. Go to your business. I know you are a big man, but go and listen to the state. Not about they bring you money every day, and you don't know how. Today you have work fifty thousand. Tomorrow you have work one hundred thousand. Oh, praise the Lord! Go and listen to the to the state of the business. Understand. How it's going, how it is running. One day, like in a weekend, go and sit in the show. See how people what things run. See how this lady you are putting the show in the show, how they are running your show. Sit behind them, see the environment. Sometimes go, come just without aggravity and sit in the parking and see the environment, how they handle your customers, how things are running. Know that. Go and listen to the voice of your workers. Have a meeting with them. How do you think this, this company should be? Well, how should it run? Have a workshop with them. Have a lunch with them. Have a dinner one day, once a while, and listen to the voice of the business. That's how you can succeed in your life.
It's not about just being there, you know, you know, that as long as they pay me, they give me money, that's no the way you are going to succeed in your life. The Bible says, Know the steps of your flock and put your heart into caring of your work. Verse number 24. For riches does not last forever. Riches does not last forever. If you don't listen to and understand how your blessing is, how your business is, how the state of your business, riches, my brother, money is not forever. Money, it's not forever. Wealth is not forever. Don't think that today you are away. you are rich forevermore, you shall be like that. No. Today you can be like this, tomorrow things might change. If you don't pay attention to it, if you don't listen to it, if you don't focus to it, tomorrow things may change. But I want to encourage you today, before it change, you can make a difference today. You can change things today. You can handle it today. You can take it to another level today. Because wealth and all riches is not forever. And uh, they continue to say, crown is not for all generation. Remember, today they have crowned you with the wealth. Your children might not be like that. But how can I make my children to encourage my blessing? Is to train them. Some of you, you have children, you take them like a, 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 like, 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 like an egg. You don't want you protect them. They, even they don't go, you know, if they're not that level to go to the supermarket. They just go to the supermarket to pick things. Please, take your children. In this lockdown, work with your children. Parent, work with your children. Let your children know where you are getting money from. Let your children know the steps of your business. Not demanding you every time. Go with them to your work. Go with them to your business. Go with them to your farm. Go with them to your garden. Let them know where they are getting all those things from. Let them know where the steps of your business are. Go with them. Let them know where you are getting money. Even though you are minister once a while, go with them to the parliament. Let them know, hey, this is how they get them. I like so much the football team players. When they come to the field, they normally sometimes they come with their children holding their hand to know that this is what I'm doing. Show your children what you are doing. As long as you're doing your good things. Show your children. Go with them. Let them admire what you are doing. Pay attention to them. Pastor, go back. Have time with your children. Teacher, have time with the children. Let them know. Let them admire what you're doing. Because that's how you're going to have another generation. Remember, the crown, it's not for generation. The crown, it's just for you. The blessing, it's just for you. Your children might enjoy the blessing today. And tomorrow when you are not around, they might suffer. Me, myself, I'm speaking before you. My parent was a good man. He has everything. But when he died, I was very young. All this, all everything went on. Everything went with him. He simply took everything. I never, I suffered from the day he died. Why? Because I was young. And because everything was not planned. I wish he, he, he left everything in the hand of the councils or the will. I would have stand on that will that my father said so and so, but he died without any will, without any document, written document concerning my life, concerning his children. He simply took everything. I know you are still young, you are not going to die, but make an agreement. Make some will to your children. Think about that. Success is already there. Blessing of God is everywhere. Understand where your blessing is. I'm enjoying this topic. I don't know if now you're enjoying like I'm enjoying. This is so amazing. Know the steps of your business. I repeat it again. Know the steps of your flock and put your heart into caring of your work. For riches don't last forever. And the crown might not uh, might not 
passed to the next generation. The crown, we have a lot of people, children today, I spoke about my testimony, and I have some people behind there, some of them were children of ministers, some of them were children of president, but today they are suffering because their parent didn't plan for them. Plan for yourself, plan for your children. Plan for the next generation because the money is just for you. No, and it's only for today. Because in, when you go to first world, that don't worry about tomorrow, don't think about tomorrow. Since you don't know what a day will end with or will it bring, don't think that, oh, even tomorrow, as I'm today, it's going to be bad. You don't know how things will end up today. You don't know what the enemy is planning beside you. You don't know what they are having beside you. Some people yesterday was so proud. Today is how things has end. So, don't think of tomorrow. Use well you are today. Don't think that where office you are, where you are, is forever and ever and more. No. Why? I'm telling you this as you are, as your friend. Because always think, don't think of yourself to be above, but think of yourself to be low in order for you to succeed in your life. Remember, an iron sharpened an iron. A friend sharpened a friend. That's why I'm here to sharpen you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to motivate you. I'm here to speak to you. You are my friend. Thank you so much for being with you, for bearing with me. I know one day we shall eat together and enjoy the fruits of our labor. You are blessed, my brother, my sister. God has a good plan for you. God has called you, has designed you with a purpose. And I want to speak to you today that you have a divine purpose and you are blessed. I want to today, as I'm wrapping up, study your life, study your business, know the steps of your business, know the steps of your company, see how you are going to run it, see how things will really work, these things how will go. Remember, as long as you think, that's how you are going to be. I want you to don't think of expanding, uh, expanding all you have. See of how you can bring more profit and you increase your business. If your prayer, see how you're going to go to another level. Every day, every time, think how you can go to another level. Don't think how things might not go on well. Think how things can all go on good. Don't think about eating. Don't think about the expenditure. How you are going to spend. See how you are going to earn on a daily best. Think about it. I want to say thank you so much for following me. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I love you so much. I've been Robert Yeo with this program, Discover Your Purpose. Today was basically about the blessing of God. And everyone, you are blessed. Don't see yourself like you are like a failure. You are a blessed one of God. Father, we thank you for all people who have been listening to us. We cover them all under the blood of Jesus. I pray that may God anoint you. May God reveal himself to you. May God lift you high above God. May God make you prosper in all what you are doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Share this message to all your friends. If it's your first time to come to my YouTube channel, subscribe it. If you're watching on the Facebook, just go Google. If you Robert you, I'm also on YouTube. You go to YouTube, still shall find the same name you're having on the Facebook, the same name on the YouTube. If you're on the YouTube, you have another account on the Facebook. Let's work together, let's serve our Lord. You are blessed. Anything you want, just inbox me there. You can join our message WhatsApp group, then we continue to stand about word of knowledge. May God bless you. See you again on Saturday with our talk show. Be blessed. Thank you.